state. And so we've watched the video of kind of introdu uh, introducing the mechanics lab. We've watched uh, me perform the mechanics lab, and now it's time to get into the analysis of the mechanics lab. So let's go ahead and let's take a peek at our files. So we're looking at our mechanics lab, and we have our data here. So let's go ahead and un let's download our data. Let's go ahead and wait for it. Let's unzip it. Let's kind of put this guy into the, let's take one step back. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extract all. I want to put this on the desktop and I'm going to do a new folder. Uh, I'm going to do mechanics S21. So I'm going to put it in this folder, select, and there we go. Let's extract it. So now if I go to my desktop, I should see exactly right here. So let's go ahead and start. We have aluminum, copper, high density polythene, polystyrene, just like we saw in the video. So let's go with aluminum first, and let's go ahead and open up our uh, mechanics notebook uh, our version right here. So let's go ahead. We want to kind of separate this into kind of metals and polymers, and we're going to look at all the different mechanical properties. But this is kind of what we're working with on here. So I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to copy and paste all these into here. Let's go ahead. Oops. Let's make sure, oops, I need to control C here. Let me just right now, I want to just repaste, get rid of all of this, and then we're going to see kind of what we're going to be doing here. So just bear with me. Again, probably definitely a way to make this a lot easier, but let's just kind of stick with it for now. So let's, as always, let's kind of just first take a look at the data. So we're going to import it. And we see we have a time column, a displacement column, a force column, a tensile stress column, and a tensile strain column. Now, we need to generate, uh, and the goal of this is to generate a stress strain curve. So we did a uniaxial tensile test. So we are going to, we pulled on kind of the sample that had dimension like this, our rectangular sample, our dog bone uh, shaped sample here. So in the setup, we had our dog bone set up like this. And we pulled like this. So if we know this is our one, two, our stress tensor was equal to uh, stress the one, one, zero, 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 everything else. So our force in the one, one is just going to simply be force divided by area. The cross sectional area here, um, you, we had these kind of machine edges or sheared edges. Let's just kind of be, let's just say it's, uh, it's going to be this width times the thickness here, the cross sectional area, an eighth of an inch. It'll be one eighth of an inch times 0.53 inches. And then you can kind of work out the rest of the uh, values there. So we're going to go ahead and go back. So we do not input, um, you know, this is a tensile stress that's kind of just spit out from the machine automatically. Um, so we need to calculate it ourselves. This is not the real values because we didn't plug in those. Um, if you watched the video, I didn't plug in those values. Time, we don't get, and again, that tells us about our strain rate. Again, we remember we pulled 15 millimeters per minute. Uh, but this key thing here is the displacement. Now, this is the cross head displacement. Now, we could calculate strain from the cross head displacement, but it's not as accurate as this, which is our extensometer uh, displacement. So you can see here, this was not zeroed out initially. We should have done that, but uh, again, we'll kind of calculate strain using this. So strain in percent, so we don't want to use percent. We just want to use our usual dimensionless strain values. Um, so we need to convert this into our usual values of strain, so non-percent, and then we have to kind of start at zero. And then we need to take our force values, which are indeed for sure accurate, and then convert that into stress. So that's going to be what we're going to So we need to extract for our y-axis, for our stress, the third column, for the x-axis, the fifth column. So let's go ahead and define our area. So our area was an eighth of an inch, so divide by eight times 0. 025, 0 0.0254, 0.0254, because again, we want to convert inches to meters. Let's just make sure that I always want to make sure I get that one right. Inches to meters, 0 0.0254. Yep, that's always a good one to have memorized. So an eighth of an inch times 0.53 times 0 0.0254. See, almost made a mistake right there. 0254. 0.254. So there we go. So that's our area. So now let's kind of take a look and we want to grab essentially these are all of our strain values. So again, I'm taking the fifth column and we're taking, we're getting ready to come to the first headers and then we're grabbing the values here. 
So this is great looking, but again, we want to start from zero. So instead, I am going to do this kind of flatten operation. I'm going to pull out um, essentially all of these values here. So I'm going to flatten. I am going to pull out again the, uh, the last column. So you see here, this is five. We can also just kind of make this consistent, but it's just a last column. So I'm going to pull out those values. I'm going to look at the differences. I'm going to insert zero initially. You see here I'm dividing by 100, and we're dividing by 100 because, again, this is in percents. We don't want it percents. We need to rescale it to zero. And then we insert zero at the first position, so we can kind of break this down. So this, all this is doing here is taking out, okay, I'm pulling out the same values. I want to divide by 100. All right, that's looking good. So then after that, I'm going to take my uh, differences code. Oops, excuse me. Just kind of, let's stop that output or suppress that output. So once I do that, I could do my differences in these values. So differences. Oops. Differences. So that's going to take the sequential difference of each of those strain measurements now. And then I'm just going to go to insert zero at the beginning, because again, we're starting at zero, and then now I'm just going to accumulate. Accumulate those differences, so sequentially adding them. And that's my screen. So screen, re-zeroed, everything's good uh, in the world, so those are kind of other values. So that's my values for screen. So we're all good there. Now, if I want to do area, I'm going to do something very, very similar. You know, one of the things I could just do is, again, I'm taking the third column, Divide by area, that's going to be my stress. Oops, except I don't have my current data file. It's always important. So let's go ahead and click that in here. And we're all out of stress. But again, we're not starting from zero, right? So we need to kind of zero out initially. So what we're going to do is something very, very, very similar. So we are just going to actually not delete that. Exactly. Let me delete the output. So all we're going to do is take, you know, uh, the entire list and we're going to subtract it from, this is essentially the very first value. So we're just subtracting out by that initial value, the very, very first value of strain. So if we just took this, we're going to look at this here. This is our first value. So let's suppress that. And so we're just zeroing out from there. So zero, starting at zero, now we're great. Let's go ahead, put stress and strain together. That's what this is doing up here, transposing. And then we could kind of look at these values. So let's take a peek at this curve. So I need to kind of find all of the values, the mechanical properties that we've kind of talked about in class. So Young's modulus, yield strength, ultimate tensile strength, elongation of failure, toughness, different, you know, and then talk about the, the fracture. So elongation at failure, that's going to be this last point right here, the x-axis, so about 0 0.1275. So you could, again, you could right-click on this. Get coordinates. So where does the yield strength occur? Again, that's a little bit kind of tougher, but you start to kind of lose, you know, you start to lose the linearity of probably about right here. Then again, you want to compare this to kind of literature values as well. Again, they might be very different from those, but okay, let's see. If I want to find, um, and actually I can kind of pull out this, right? But one of the ways we can find some of these values, so let's say, for example, I know that this is my strain. So Strain equals this, and I know that my stress is this, so stress equals this. So one of the ways I could find what's my elongation of failure, my maximum value of strain, I'll just max strain. What's my max, my ultimate tensile strength, what's my max of stress? Right there. So you can kind of pull out some of those values, other ones you're going to have to kind of look at them on uh, the chart. Now, how am I going to figure out the Young's modulus? Well, I want to approximate that linear region. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a couple points here and let's approximate it. So I'm going to go put this, I copy them, right clicked, clicked a couple points, press Control C. Now let's go ahead and kind of copy it. What is the Young's modulus for aluminum 6061? Should be about 69 gigapascals. That's pretty good. Again, I could probably get a little bit closer and, you know, um, uh, kind of look at my, you know, be a little bit more precise on my curve, but that's a pretty nice, uh, you know, that's pretty close. Uh, it's really nice, actually. Uh, now, how do we calculate toughness? Well, we know that toughness is the integral under the curve, and then we have to uh, multiply by the volume. So 
There's a cool function in Mathematica called interpolation. So we can kind of basically fit uh, essentially all these values. And I'm just starting from kind of the first, I ignoring the first 20 points. Um, so I'm just kind of doing that. And now I need to multiply by the volume. So what's the volume of my material? Well, let me give myself a little bit of, I'm just going to, you know, approximate this as kind of a completely, uh, I'm going to ignore kind of the dog bone aspect. I'm just going to assume it's a complete, you know, uh, rectangular parallel pipette, and, you know. So I'm going to do an inch, uh, one inch times six times one eighth. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do one times 0 0.0254. We're going to do six times 0 0.0254. 254, and we're going to do an eighth times times 0 0.0254. So that's my volume. If I integrate this function from 0 to, and you can do max of strain, then there you go. So this is your toughness in joules. So now you can do the same procedure for uh, copper, for HDPA, for PMMA. So again, you want to kind of uh, generate these graphs. You could kind of put them on top of each other if you want to kind of compare metals and polymers or kind of any different types of mixtures. Again, you can look at the excellent student example. But that's essentially all the analysis that we're going to be doing in this lab. So producing stress strain curves, looking at the analysis, and again, you know, uh, unfortunately because we weren't in person, you didn't get to you get to see in the video uh, us breaking the material. So that's the kind of the fun part of the uh, So I hope that uh, kind of clarified the analysis part. So. Do those analysis, create beautiful plots, write an excellent lab report, and then we'll be on to corrosion your last lab. So thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.